Hi there, welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. My name is Shadow C and today I'm going to teach you about a very special type of clock, the observer clock. Now, in my research for a faster and well, maybe for a faster clock, not an easy I wasn't really looking for an easier clock. I was looking for a really really fast clock that I could easily build on my dropper system water elevators that I've been I've been building, you know, right here in this this building right there. Which, by the way, if you don't know about it, you can check my Minecraft Survival series and you will know. So I stumbled upon a video uh, showing this work of art, really. This amazing contraption, so simple and compact, that creates a really, really fast clock. And I'm not sure who created this, this Reston, this Observer Clock concept uh, the first time. If you know, feel free to leave a comment right in the video, pointing to the right guy. Uh, what I'm going to link in the description is the video that I found uh, which teaches a little tutorial about the Reston Observer Clocks. But I wanted to explain uh, more in depth how they work and why they work. So for example, uh, it must have been around the 1.13 version of Minecraft. Somebody came along playing with the, with the observers. If you put an observer facing this way and then observer, an observer facing the other way, like that, what you will get immediately is a very fast clock pulse, as you can see here with the with the reston. So that was an amazing discovery. But how do you stop this this you know you know this sort of contraption? Well, how do you stop it? It's very easy to to do it with, for example, uh, a sticky piston right here. So if you have a lever here, you activate the clock with the lever. As you can see, the reston here is sticking really fast. You get to deliver again, and there you go. The clock is turned off, and this is really, really easy to make. So let's say, let's say I put a sticky piston facing upwards right here. I put an observer clock facing this way, then a temporary block, an observer facing that way, then yeah, another temporary block. I'm gonna destroy this because it's not necessary, and a bit of rest on output that maybe I could put a lamp but you know and so to activate this you can do that with any sort of uh, you know pulse that is going to be an extended pulse so for example I can activate this and immediately this is going to activate the clock and deactivate it and the clock is being deactivated and the cool thing about this is that you can actually stack this I think I'm gonna try this now for the first time but I'm pretty sure that you can stack those one besides the other like this let's put a block here to make sure well uh you're gonna need something else than than rest and dust there so that the signals don't get mixed but you get the idea if i activate this one it's going to activate this clock but not the other clock notice how the red dot here is turned off that's weird it should oh because the, the observer is facing the the opposite direction observer is observing this face so, to go to the concept, before going to the last example, why this works? Well, observer blocks uh, check for updates in the world and emit a signal. For example, this observer that I just placed facing my way, it has an arrow, meaning that the signal is going to go into the direction of this arrow. And for example, let's see, I'm going to just put a sticky piston right here so that you can see it. This face right here of the observer is going to observe changes to the world. For example, if I place a block here, there you go. One tick pulse. So continuing with the example of the sticky piston, if I place a block right here and I up update the observer, what I create here is a T flip flop. As you can see here, the block goes up and down because the one tick pulse is not long enough for the sticky piston to react and retract the block on the first try, it needs a second try. And that's a bug that was, I don't remember when it was introduced, but it was never fixed because this is actually useful to create such, uh, you know, T flip flop mechanisms. But what we're concerned with right now is the observer clock and how, why does it work? Well, this observer, you know, observes for updates to blocks in this space right here. So if I place an observer right here, what happens? This observer reacts and emits a pulse in turn, this observer changes its state. So this observer right here on the next tick will detect that change in state and emit a pulse and change the state, which is going to be 
in turn, you know, you know where I'm going. So this is back and forth, back and forth. These blocks are changing state with every tick and emitting a pulse on every tick. And that makes for a really, really fast clock. Very compact and very easy to make actually. So going to the last example right here, we have a dropper. You know, we like to manipulate items with droppers and you know, water uh, currents, which is really awesome in 1.13. So there's a very simple mechanism that you can do right here. Uh, if I place a dropper right here facing this way and a comparator, remember comparator is going to measure when this dropper has items. So, which means that I'm going to turn on this observer clock as soon as this comparator and as long as this comparator is emitting a signal. So what you can do with that is I put an observer right here and by the magic of redstone, this observer, this this pulse that this observer is going to emit, is going to also power the the dropper so that it can very quickly drop items. And look how fast that goes. That's that's so amazing. That is so much faster than before. So it's going to drop. It's going to speed out really fast. That stack of concrete that I just put right here, and when it ends, the signal here is going to turn off the sticky piston is going to retract and you know the clock is going to go back to, to its off state and just to demonstrate it can work with just one item because it's not long enough you know the comparator actually takes long enough for the sticky piston to be able to retract the the the, the other observer so that's really cool it's really compact and i'm going to make a f one final demonstration here that i don't i'm not sure how useful this would be but you can actually have as many of these clocks side by side as you need and they won't interfere with each other so for example i can put let's just put this eight right here so that that clock is ticking and i can put you know another three i don't know why i had three <laughs> in my inventory but you know you see the concept this is stackable this is very compact this is really fast it's, you can switch it on and off it's an amazing amazing clock so i hope you've enjoyed this uh, short tutorial uh, if you like, please leave a like, a comment, or subscribe to my channel for some more Minecraft tutorial, or check out that Minecraft survival series that I'm running that I'm going to implement all of these concepts in. So, hope you like, and see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.